And uh, also I wanted to say thank you to OS Training for organizing this day and uh, giving me an opportunity to chat uh, for a little bit about SEO and Drupal, which is um, kind of what I've built my life's work around is uh, helping people understand SEO um, in the Drupal context and um, and making the most of their making the most of their websites. So my name is Ben Finkley. Um, I am the founder of a company called Veloci. We work on primarily Drupal SEO projects, um, although we we do have some other things that we do like um, analytics, which is getting more and more complicated these days. We do a bit of email marketing. And uh, we also do uh, pay-per-click management and some other uh, digital marketing related uh, tasks. But by and large, the majority of our work is uh, straight up Drupal SEO. That is helping our customers to make the most of their websites when it comes to how they rank in Google and uh, driving that traffic and, and converting that traffic into uh, leads or, or paying customers. Um, al almost, 10 years ago now, maybe it's more like eight years ago now, I created uh, this module called the SEO Checklist Module. Um, I used to keep a sticky note on the side of my monitor with all of the all the different modules that I would install in a, in a new Drupal site. This was back in Drupal 4 or 5. Um, and I thought, you know what, I should turn this into, uh, I, should, I should figure out a way to make this uh, more easy to keep track of what I've done. And so I created this module uh, called the SEO Checklist Module. Um, I am uh, proud to say that we released it uh, today, so um, it is now available for Drupal 8, and you can go check that out on, uh, on Drupal.org uh, when you get a minute. Uh, I am also the author of two books on Drupal SEO. Um, the first one was Drupal 6, uh, written back in 2009 and published by Pact, and then uh, right now I am uh, finishing up the release process for Drupal 8 SEO. We are in um, the uh, pre-ordering stage and uh, you can go check that out. Um, it is uh, a much more visual and step-by-step -step guide than my original book was. So if you already know SEO, then uh, you know this is, a, this is a great book to help you along with the Drupal part of, of that. So um, the next several minutes, um, maybe the next 20 minutes or so, I would like to talk about um, some of the things that would really help uh, your customer sites when you design them, wireframe them, and build them to make them as valuable as they can be and as clean as they can be so that when the SEO guy comes along, he can do his job um, as, as well as he can without doing any rework. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, six or seven things here. The first one is flexibility, and flexibility by flexibility, everybody's kind of uh, now doing responsive design and mobile first, and those those technologies were really created to uh, make sure that content and images and uh, the things that make up a website flow really well based on uh, how the end user is consuming the site. Um, what we find though uh, is that sometimes when we start to work on a site, it is so it is designed so solidly that it's almost impossible to like get any additional text into the site or add a block when we need to to do different things. And SEO is changing all the time. I, I am talking about keywords here. You know, we need to get the keywords on the page, but there are all kinds of new things, new technologies that are coming along um, that we need to go into a site and make changes to it. And if it is, if it's designed in such a way that it is exa looks exactly how it's supposed to look, with no changes, then it's very difficult for us to do that. Um, so uh, my my first tip for the evening is make sure that you build flexibility into the site. Make sure that there's space. If something gets added to the page, that it's not going to destroy the design. Um, so build it really in a very uh, design design friendly but also flexible um, kind of method. The second one I uh, stole directly from Jeff Eaton, who is a, a friend of mine who works at Lullabot. He did a presentation called Deep Lobbing Your Chunks. Um, and it is um, basically the idea here is that you want to break out each discrete piece of information in a node um, into its own separate field. Um, and so what, what happens is we'll come in and we'll need to search engine optimize, say, an event. 
and we go into that node and we get a title which is the name of the event and then we get the body and then everything is dumped into that body field um, like the start date, the end date, you know, the registration dates, who's presenting, what they're presenting about, um, all these different things are just kind of crammed into the body and it makes it very difficult to optimize those because we need to be able to wrap each of those elements into in its own tags um, to make the most of what the search engines are doing with Semantic Web. So my tip here is make sure that when you design uh, the nodes in a site that you actually think about the different pieces of information that are going to be needed and you build those into different fields. Um, Schema.org is a website that was developed by Google and several partners in the search engine world to give us a structure for how content should be marked up um, and like what are the different fields that a piece of content should have. So um, spend some time at schema.org and look at the way that the search engines are expecting content to be created. And then there's the schema.org module which actually uh, works backwards from there and it helps you to create your content types using the schema.org um, uh, schemas. So that's another another tip here is to go in and use the tools that have been built in Drupal um, to make sure that your content is as uh, markupable as it as it can be. And instantly there's a link down there at the bottom that you can visit um, to read uh, Jeff's article, uh, which I, I highly and strongly recommend. All right, the next one is meaningful content silos. So um, a content silo is so is a way of thinking about how your content on your site is organized. Um, the search engines really look for hierarchical organizational structures. So the, the front page of your site is the top of the site. When you go down the, um, the, down, down the path, then you're going to get uh, the names and keywords that have meaning and carry that meaning down through to the content. And the way that we do that in Drupal is with the Path Auto module. So what you would do is you would use the Path Auto module to create a really good hierarchical structure of your site. Um, and then you'd use something like Taxonomy to tag all of your content so that you get these additional uh, highly defined pages that contain all the content in a well-structured way and links to in a structured way. Um, so search engines use those silos to grade your content and make sure that they're um, showing it to people who are searching for the particular topics that you're looking for. So this is one of the things that uh, we have had a tremendous amount of success at at Veloci. Um, when a customer comes to us and they have an old site and it's got tons of content in it, but the content's not really generating much traffic, uh, we can go through, set up taxonomies, tag all their content, and then submit those taxonomy tag pages to Google via the XML sitemap module and suddenly this old dormant content is generating traffic and qualified leads for their business. So it, it can be very powerful. Put a couple more examples and some links there so you can check that out. So uh, Drupal best practices. My next tip is really to use the tools that Drupal gives you. Um, frequently, um, we'll come across a site that's been built in, in a way because somebody, well, I don't like that module. I don't like that way of doing it. Um, and they have their reasons, but what that does for us as an SEO company is it uh, basically means that none of the tools that we use to, uh, to optimize a site work. We've got to now reinvent the wheel and it can become very costly to your client uh, for us to do that. So my tip is if you, unless you have a, a particular business case um, for not using the straightforward popular Drupal module, then just you know pick pick the modules. Chances are they're 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 optimized already, then they're great, and we can use them. We're familiar with them. Um, so um, then you know quick link there to the best practices course. If most of you are developers, which I think you are, you probably already know the Drupal best practices. But uh, just to reiterate, you know let's let's not reinvent the wheel if we don't have to. So the Sidebar and the footer of a site um, it is just, it's a place where it seems like uh, information is dumped when it doesn't fit anywhere else. And sometimes what we see is a, a massive 
three column footer that's all you know this HTML dumped into this one block and then displayed in the in the footer of the site. We see that sometimes in the sidebar as well. And it, it gets again back to deblobbing your chunks. You want to make sure that your chunks are or that your <laughs> chunks make sure that your content is pretty well defined and that we can go in and optimize each one of those sections, swap them in and out as we need to um, so that the site remains clean and, uh, and we can get the markup into it. The next one is, um, uh, it's something that we see a lot in templates um, or, or theme files where someone will, um, they'll build out this great theme, but then they'll put the H1 tag around the uh, the, the logo of the company. And we see this so frequently, I thought it would be appropriate for me to mention it here. Uh, the, the Google doesn't read the logo. They, they don't translate the text from it. It's a graphic file and they're not going to do anything with it. You want to put your H1 around the title of, if it's a node, the title of the node, or if it's say your homepage or category page, create an H1 and embed it in the page so that uh, Google knows what this page is all about. Of course, it needs to be similar but different from the title tag, um, and that's a whole other conversation. But the main thing is don't throw away the tools that Google has given you to define your content by putting your H1 around an image file. Uh, along those same lines, um, a, a really cool thing that you can do is to adjust the WYSIWYG editor and remove, if you're using H1 consistently and well in your theme files, remove the H1 from the WYSIWYG editor and that prevents content creators and bloggers from, hey, I just want to style this one section of my site and I'm going to use this H1 um, because that diminishes the value of the H1 that you've defined as the, as the node title. Um, and so if you take that away and force them to use, say, an H2 or to style it in some other way, um, that's really a positive thing for your SEO. Um, and so, uh, if, you know, and if they insist on, hey, I need, I need this style to look like this or I want to add this to my, to my site, um, you can create other styles and, and give those to the customer. But um, do you, if, if possible, um, remove those those uh, H tags, or, or at least the H1 and H2 from your WYSIWYG editors. The next thing I want to talk about is um, images. So uh, there are um, some some pretty popular social media sites out there, Facebook and Twitter, to name a couple. Um, and these companies have defined what are the right sizes that they want you to use when you share content on their site. And the value of doing that is that the, you know, a, a shared piece of content is going to look better, it's going to get more eyeballs, and it, it's going to get more traffic back to your site. So um, there's a, a link there down in the bottom. You follow that link, it'll take you to Facebook, and they go through and they tell you exactly the minimums and maximums that they uh, would like their content to, uh, to, to look like. Um, and so if you can build that into Drupal and there's you know, image sizes and things, tools to do that, um, then you will have a much more shareable um, website, shareable piece of content. All right, so if you've built your site uh, and you've used these tips through the process of, of ideating and wireframing and designing and building out your site, um, then now you're ready to do SEO. Um, so let's talk about let's talk about what that means. What is what is technical SEO? So technical SEO, and, and I'm I'm going to boil it down to a, a handful of things. Um, you're going to install the SEO checklist module, and you're going to follow along through it. We maintain that module when new when new modules come out or new recommendations come out. We're adding them to the SEO checklist module. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it. We released the Drupal 8 version today, so you can now go to drupal.org and download that um, and, uh, and, and follow it and keep, keep it up to date because we're, we're constantly adding new things to it. Um, automate when possible by using tokens. Um, something I see is if you're creating a site for uh, one company and they have multiple locations, um, create 
nodes with the name of the location for each of the locations that you're building it for so that we can then leverage that in a token for the title of the of the page, the H1, any of the meta tags and things. We want to be able to use that token so it automates a lot of the process and saves a ton of time and money. Um, the third one is make Drupal load in about two seconds. Um, it, it shouldn't take more than two seconds for a page to come up. And in fact, in, in five seconds, uh, you're going to lose 70% of your audience if your page takes more than five seconds to load. So um, do, do whatever you need to do to make Drupal load in less than two seconds. Uh, we actually use um, content distribution network CDNs uh, in Cloudflare um, and, and other tools to make Drupal load as fast as we can. Um, and then there's a lot of tuning that you can do to make Drupal load quickly. And search engines look at that and they, and they reward you for that activity. Um, and then finally, track everything. Uh, you know, put analytics, uh, use Google Tag Manager, um, use the, the free tools that are out there and keep track of what people are doing, where they're coming from and what they do on your site. Um, these are, you know, this, this is the core of, of technical uh, Drupal SEO. So I'm going to show you a few things. Um, the SEO checklist module, as I said, we released it today. Um, and the, it, it literally goes down and gives you a, a checkoff list of all the things that you need to do to, to SEO your site. Um, follow along through the module. Um, and the, the book that I have just finished writing um, will be released in January. It goes right along with the module and tells you exactly this, the, how to do each of the steps in, that are mentioned in the SEO checklist. So the SEO checklist is what you need to do. The book is how to do it. Um, so combine those two things together. This is a list of the modules um, that are covered in the SEO checklist. Um, it's basically, it, co it, it covers your um, meta tags, it covers your paths, it covers uh, submitting your site to the search engines. Um, there's some cool new things like the Yoast SEO module that's just come out recently for Drupal, which is a fantastic module. Um, AMP which is uh, uh, basically accelerated mobile pages, which is Google's way of delivering your content to mobile devices very quickly. Um, there's a number of things in here that um, are really good for your SEO. So, um, and the SEO checklist module covers all of these things. So I wanna show you just a few of the, um, a few of the modules, uh, I tried to pick three or four that are, I think, representative of the different kind of activities you'll be doing um, if you do the technical SEO on a site. Um, the first is the coffee module. And I guess you can say this doesn't actually have anything to do with SEO, except that it really helps you get things done faster. And a lot of people still at this point haven't even heard of the coffee module. So the way that it works is you, when you have the coffee module installed, it uses the admin menus to create a, a type ahead uh, field. And that's this, this kind of gray bar here in the middle of the, of the screen. And if you're on a, a Mac, you're gonna hit, I think it's option D. And if you're on a PC, it's control D, I think. Um, and it pops up this little thing and you start typing ahead. Um, and so say if I typed SEO into that field, it would pull up the two admin links on my site that have the word SEO in them, which in this case is Yoast and the SEO checklist module. Then you simply click on the, the item that you were looking for, or use your down arrows and select it and hit enter, and it will take you right to that screen without having to go through um, any, any admin screens or, or clicking more than really once. Um, to get you exactly where you need to be. This can be super helpful and speed up the process of doing your, uh, your marketing. Um, the second one I'd like to talk about is the Path Auto module. So I mentioned it earlier in that it's a way to create silos in your site. Um, and once you, when, once you have it installed, you come here to the, it basically creates this patterns tab um, on, your, uh, on your site aliases. And so you click the add Path Auto pattern button and it takes you to uh, this screen where you can then create the patterns that will make up the hierarchy and structure of your site. So in this example, the pattern type is content and uh, the pattern we're using is to take the node title and to turn that into the path. This is a very simple example of what you can do. So if you've got, um, uh, say, a, a node that's called my cat, 
and then you click save, then the path for that piece of content is going to be yourwebsite.com slash my dash cat. And so it's a very straightforward way of setting that up. Now, of course, you'd want to build a little bit better hierarchy into that. I recommend, again, using taxonomies and building more complex patterns. Then further down on the page, you're going to select what content types this applies to. You're going to give it a label, which is just arbitrary, whatever you want it to be, and you click save. And uh, Path Auto takes care of giving the, that piece, uh, the pieces of content that are in, um, uh, in, in your site. It will actually go through as you create them and uh, create the path for you. Um, so when you click save, then this is what it's going to look like. So uh, if another example is like, hey, I want everything to be on my, on my blog to have the word blog, uh, which is great. So you might add blog slash and then the note title. You say, I want that only to apply to blog posting. And uh, you click save, and it's going to, and then, of course, create that as you, uh, as you create the content. It will not retroactively go back and wipe out all your paths um, unless you tell it to do that and you should back up your site before you do that. So if you go to your um, content screen on your site, then over here on the right you'll see the path and uh, this is just to show you what the path auto module does. It basically it changes all those paths. You said that you want it to be named blog, well it put the word blog and then named the, con the, the path. Um, appropriately. All right, so let's talk about the meta tag module. The meta, meta tags, everybody I think knows what meta tags are. I don't think I need to belabor that point. But the meta tag module gives you a very flexible way of um, setting up the meta tags for your site. So you can go through um, and uh, click on, uh, once you have the, of course, having the meta tag module installed, you can go to global and click the edit button there. And it's going to take you to the default meta tags for your entire site. Um, and you can go through and say, look, I want all my page titles to look like this. I want my description to read like that, like that. And by setting all that up, when you create content, you don't have to write meta tags for each piece of content on your site. And uh, it, it's a lot of fields. There's probably there's probably 30 fields just for the default meta tags. And then as you go through each of your content types, you got to fill out basically the same set of fields again because it, that information is going to change from content type to content type. So what I did is I took all of the uh, times that I've done this for different for my customers, and it's it's a big part of the of the project. And I captured um, what all of those fields best practices, which kind of covers most people but not all. Um, and I and I captured those and I put them in uh, in my book. So uh, you can now go through and you can see here's exactly all the different fields and here's exactly the tokens and the information that needs to go to each of those fields. Broke it out by all the most popular content types, the different places on your site that that uh, that you should have, you know the different types of information you have for your meta tags, um, and it's all there uh, for your use. The next module I'd like to cover is the diff module. So um, one of the things I think is overlooked in uh, by, by sometimes is the idea that um, when when things change on your site, it's going to have an effect that you may not understand or see, but it's going to have an effect on how that page or that site is doing in the search engines. And uh, the diff module is a a great tool for helping you kind of put on your uh, detective hat and hunt down those changes and figure out what are the things that are making a difference positively or negatively in the search engine optimization of my project. So uh, the first thing you need to do is go through your content types and by default turn on create new revisions so that every change should be tracked. And I understand this is overridable, but um, if you go turn it on, at the content type level, then most of the time that's going to make sure that any change that happens to a node is going to be uh, done as a revision that you can then go back and look at. And then once you've done that uh, and you're on a particular uh, node, um, you'll notice that uh, turn it, anytime there's some revisions for that node, you'll see a revisions tab. And so you click on the revisions tab and it takes you over here and these little radio buttons are 
what the diff module add. So you can create any two revisions, the current revision and uh, any previous revision, and you can tell it, hey, I want to compare these. And you click the compare button down in the lower left-hand corner there, and it will actually show you on the page exactly what the revisions are that were made to that, uh, to that node. Um, now, this is really helpful if a, if a page was getting lots of traffic and then you see suddenly you're looking at your analytics and this, this page dived. You know, well, what, did, what happened? Well, we changed the title. Oh, man, and that, that messed everything up. We need to fix that. Um, or, you know, this, this page is doing really, really well. What happened? Well, we went through and we just we made sure the, the keywords were all in the right places on the page. Now it's doing well in the search engine and generating traffic for our site. Great, great. And you can see that uh, retroactively using the diff module. So as far as modules and technical, technical SEO, that's all I wanted to cover today. Um, this went a little bit quicker, I think, than I thought it would. Uh, we've only used up about half of our a lot of time. So uh, thank you very much for your attention. Again, thanks to Steve and, and OS Training. And uh, I'm going to throw this open to, uh, to questions now and uh, take your questions. And I think if you'll use the chat or the questions, which I actually, I don't think I can even see those. Steve, are you handy? So I think, uh, Steve, are you there? Yeah, sorry, my headset was playing up. Uh, okay. So okay. Uh, I, for whatever reason, I cannot see any of the questions. I know you had some questions earlier, and they never showed up on my uh, my GoToWebinar control panel. So, okay, so we've got a question from Manoj. Uh, how many character limit? Or how long should the characters, how many characters can you fit in a title tag? In a title tag. Well, uh, it's kind of a little bit of a loaded question in that um, it, it, it depends on what you want, uh, what, why you're asking the question. If it's for how many will Google display, um, I think it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 35, something like that, maybe 33, 37, something, somewhere in there. Um, and so, uh, you know, what happens if you, if you exceed that is you'll see um, an ellipsis. They'll, they'll cut off the page title and use an ellipsis. But you can get pretty creative, and you can uh, have Google add that ellipsis um, because you've written your, your title tag in such a way to generate suspense in the visitor's mind. So um, they see your title tag, they read it, uh, they see the ellipsis, and they want to know more, and they'll click. Um, so the other thing that this kind of brings up is you want to make sure that you get your best keywords as close to the front of the title tag as you can. Uh, I'm not an advocate of writing for the search engines, but um, it, you really kind of have to be mindful of, of Google as a, as a visitor. You know, um, they're, they're going to want to know what your content's about, and they're going to base that on what keywords you use in the title, and more importantly, the keywords that are at the beginning of the title. OK, uh, we've got one person. Um seconding your recommendation of the coffee module mm -hmm. uh, oh, good. Question. yeah, yeah. coffee module is amazing and I'm, I'm just I'm blown away by how many people have not heard of that module it saves so much time it's amazing uh, a question from Mike uh, what is the status of meta tags and how they impact SEO uh, I guess he's asking whether Google still pays attention to them anymore or if they do uh, how much of an impact they actually have um, yeah, um, so uh, I wanted to just real quick circle back around uh, to the question on how many, um, uh, since it's related to meta tags, uh, it's, it's really actually 50 or 60 characters is what you can use. Um, you want to try to keep your title, your title tag characters under, under 60. Um, but the, the, the length has changed uh, over time. It's, it used to be much shorter. It's longer now. Um, but the, the question about meta tags, um, Google really does pay attention to meta tags. And 
there are certain meta tags that they don't pay attention to, um, like the keywords meta tag, and that's kind of like the most famous one that Google just flat out ignores. Um, but they do actually pay attention to the meta tags. In fact, they, they use the meta tags for the, the display of the search results. Um, literally, they take your title tag and they take the description tag, and those two elements are the two main major elements of a search result listing. Um, and uh, they'll use other uh, information from your uh, meta tags to, to display other things. Um, certainly, uh, Facebook uses the meta tags to determine which image they're going to show when they display your content. Um, you also can, there are specific uh, meta tags for Facebook that, uh, uh, that you can define how they display your content, what it says about it, how long they archive it, things like that. Um, also, the, there's a, a tag called the canonical tag. Um, the canonical meta tag basically tells Google if there are two pages that have the identical content um, and one of them has a canonical tag pointing at the other, that other page is going to get the credit for any links that are inbound. Um, so, for example, if page A and page B, and page B has a canonical that says, hey, page A is the, is the canonical of this content, Google's going to give the link value and point people to page A instead of to page B. And sometimes you'll want that if you have uh, multiple categories that a product should belong to, or you have content that needs to be on your homepage, but also in the you know, sales information on your site. You'll, you'll, there are definitely a lot of circumstances where you want the same, the same content in multiple places for your users. But you want to use the canonical tag, uh, the meta tag, to, to tell Google what you're doing and why you're doing it. So it, I guess the answer is um, overall very much so. Very much they use the, the meta tags. Uh, but there are a few that you can ignore. Uh, do you pay attention or optimize for any search engines and any search engines except for Google? It's hmm. a great question. And the answer is yes, but not, not you know, Bing. Um, a little, uh, maybe. I'll, I'll think about Bing or keep track of Bing. But the other search engines I optimize for are uh, YouTube, which is a, like the second biggest search engine there is after Google. Um, Facebook is a massive search engine. Uh, I think a lot of people don't realize that. It's a search engine for very particular kinds of content, but it is indeed a search engine. Um, their open graph is, um, you know, is a phenomenal way that people discover content. So yeah, absolutely, we pay attention to um, to other search engines um, other than Google. But Google's the 800 pound rule. I mean, let's not let's not be too sly about this. I mean, there 70, 80 percent of your of your search engine traffic uh, is going to come from Google. Um, so yeah. Uh, what are the exact steps to actually add the metadata to a specific node? Where would you actually enter the metadata for an individual node? Okay. Can I just uh, show you? Yeah, I think that's what the question is. They're looking for a visual idea of how it's done. Uh, me... Can you see that? Yes. Okay, let me maximize it. So this is just a, I don't know, a Lauren Bipsum site, um, one that I use to take screenshots for the book. So um, let me go into a particular piece of content. Uh, I'm going to click edit. You know what? I am not 100% sure I have meta tags installed on this site right now. Uh, good, I do. So it's over here. So once you install the meta tag module, um, you're going to go over here to the right-hand side. It's going to pre-fill um, whatever you've created in your settings. So if I go to meta tag and uh, and I go in and I and I edit say the global and I go in and enter these different things or if I do that for that particular um, content type I create a, a for all this is for all the content and then I can I'll get another one for the other uh, types of, of content um, it will pre-fill those on that blog post. Um, so that you don't have to fill them out, but you can certainly override them um, and, and put something else in there if, if it makes sense to do so. And that's, that's the thing. When we're doing the technical SEO on a site, um, you're, what you're doing is you're kind of getting the site so that it stays optimized about 
about 80% of it, like 75, 80% of any content that goes in the site will be pretty well optimized. Um, where you win the SEO battle is getting from the bottom of the first page of Google to the top of the first page of Google. And the only way to do that is that last 20 or 30%. And it's where you go in here and you go, nope, I'm not going to use the get note summary. I'm going to write my own because this description is what people see and decide whether they're going to click. And then you go through here and you, you, you know, tweak your content and you use the, uh, the Yoast module settings here to, you know, optimize your content. That's for the, the real battle takes place in the world of SEO. The technical stuff is very is necessary. We have to get that stuff done, um, but it's that page by page stuff is where you're really going to beat your, comp your competitors. So, um, hope that answered your question. Um, certainly, there's a lot more meta tags here. Be careful. You can actually if you set some of this stuff wrong. You can, um, you know, your, your 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 site won't show up. Your your this page won't show up. You know. So um, be careful with how you use them and know what you're doing. But um, but yeah, that's how you do it over here on the right side. How important is it to be descriptive or more descriptive for your read more links, replacing them with text which more yeah, that's accurately great. describes what you're linking to? Uh, that's a great question. Um, and I think what the, uh, the, the question refers to is uh, this link right here, this read more link. So uh, Google passes the value um, and they and they define what a page is about based on the this text um, that uh, this is the the uh, the text that actually links over. Also, if you'll notice when I hover, um, it actually also brings up the uh, the the title uh, the title tag of the link. So your, your links have title tags as well, um, and they use that to determine what the page that you're linking to is all about. A little bit for what this page is about, but mostly for what the page you're linking to. And so, if you can change this text to be more descriptive, um, it's that's a positive, that's a bonus, um, and it definitely helps the link um, carry more weight and, and helps Google to better define what that following page is about. Of course, here this is just a, a demo site, so I haven't gone to that level, but yeah. Okay, and I think this is the final question that we have here. Um, um, you recommend quite a lot of modules here. Um, do you worry about any performance hit from installing all of these? Yep. <laughs> I do. Um, but it's a, it's a trade-off, you know, I mean, I think everything is a trade-off between performance and uh, functionality. Um, the modules that I'm recommending are, these are not crazy modules, they're not, you know, doing anything particularly heavy. Um, but yeah, we keep track of how much time um, that Drupal takes to load any particular module or load the elements of a module. Uh, we use caching with our clients' um, sites. We use the, um, uh, there's, there's several modules that we use to make sure that the site is performing as well as it possibly can. Um, and you know, heavy use of caching is what's, what's gonna solve that problem. Um, the the modules that I, I'm not even sure now I'm running locally um, here let's see, think how I would run a quick test but it, it's it's not it's not overwhelming it's not anything you can't overcome oh uh... Okay, and then one final question. Can you provide a list of modules you recommend? Um, yeah, Mark, we've been talking about, well, Ben, you want to wrap up by um, quickly showcasing your SEO checklist module? Sure. So you bet. So the SEO, um, the SEO checklist is, um, we'll just go to it right here on this little site. Um, it is a checklist of all the modules that you need and uh, also several additional steps that you'll take to optimize your site. Um, so the SEO checklist, uh, you'll go down the left-hand side through these tabs. Um, if it detects that some stuff is already done, it's already going to check them off for you. So if it, it, it'll auto-detect like if a module is installed. When you click the Save button, um, it actually saves a time and date stamp of who was who was logged in and, and what was the time and date that um, that that checkoff item was last checked. 
So this is a great way of keeping track of all the stuff that you've already installed and done on your site. But then you can go, okay, I've got this Path Auto module installed. I'm here in the checklist. I can say, or if I don't have it, I can click download, um, and that'll take me over to uh, Drupal.org so I can download the module. Um, I can um, in, click the install link. I'll just do this, and it'll take me over to the um, uh, extend uh, section of the site so I can turn that module on um, and then I can actually go in and it has a link to uh, configure the permissions as well so I can go in and, and set up uh, give myself permissions to use that module if I need to do that um, and then um, so it, it provides a lot of, of functionality as well you can actually if you'll notice um, I've included the uh, chapter and page number for uh, the Drupal 8 SEO book. So if you have the book, you can go flip right to it and know exactly how to uh, to take care of that particular function. Um, I've also built into this version of the module that uh, that I've not done before. I've built in the uh, Composer, Drupal Console, and Drush commands for a lot of these. So if you're uh, a developer and you're using those tools. Um, just as a convenience, I've thrown those on the page as well, so that you can uh, you can use um, your um, UI of choice. So um, that's that's the uh, that's the SEO checklist model. That's how it works. Oh, and we did get one last question sneaking in there. Um, sure. When you change the meta tag directly on a node, does it ever get overwritten when you change the global settings? Uh, no, um, it will not overwrite what you've done on a node. Cool. Well, thank you very much indeed, Ben. You bet. Um, thank you very much. And uh, let me flip back over here. If you want to get in touch with me, there's my um, contact info, uh, my email address, and my uh, Twitter handle. And then, of course, uh, please do check out the book and um, let me know what you think. Appreciate it. Thanks, Steve. Wonderful. Thanks, Ben. Uh, thanks to uh, the attendees for coming. We have three sessions left in Drupal 8 day. Um, if you have time, I'd love you to join us for these final sessions and celebrate uh, Drupal 8's birthday. Thank you for coming. Thanks a lot. Happy birthday, Drupal. Hey, indeed.